Okay, everybody, welcome back to episode seven of the Airsoft Podcast with the Headless Chicken Squad. I am the Don, and I'll be right back after this short message. Okay, welcome back, YouTube, and wherever podcast you're listening to around the world. Welcome back to the Airsoft Podcast. I am the Don, and each week we bring you the very best of the Airsoft world, whether it's a guest uh, member from the Headless Chicken Squad or we delve out into the community to find the best of the best and bring you all the best chats, viewpoints, and discussions. Today is no exception. Uh, I've been following this chat for a while. We've interacted a few times. I appreciate the content that he puts out there and also his viewpoint in the airsoft world. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest today is none other than DMR Dave. Hi, Dave. How are you getting on, bud? Hello. I'm good. And yourself? Yeah, I'm good, mate. I'm good. Thanks for uh, jumping on. I know um, when we first said we were going to do the podcast, I promised that we'd uh, get you on. So uh, thanks for actually joining me. And, uh, you know, there's a few viewpoints I know we've shared. I'm, I'm very looking forward, well, very much looking forward to sharing it uh, with the Airsoft community. And I'm putting a few wrongs right, hopefully. Um, I had a bit of a delve into your content before we came on. Just to refresh uh, myself with a few um few pointers and viewpoints to yourself so uh, i'm looking forward to, to sort of sharing them but before we go into that I, I could introduce you for a month of sundays why don't you introduce yourself to the airsoft community um so they can kind of familiarize themselves with you so i'm dmr dave i've been playing airsoft for around 18 months now um it's the best hobby i could have chosen i absolutely love it every other weekend i'm out on the field so you see me come and say hi okay you say that you're out there uh where whereabouts obviously i can tell from um from your accent there you're definitely uh south of the watford gap um where where can we usually see you out play so i live in surrey but i play um around crawley and south coast around that area uh mm -hmm. so i've played at iron site in andover uh mm -hmm. drive all been crawley i've been to um Green ops in lip hook as well. Um, I, I want to venture out a bit further as well, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I mean, it's, we we go here, there, and everywhere. I think there there's so much to offer in the uh, the airsoft world in the UK that if you've got the ability, the funds, and the opportunity to do so, get yourself out there and sample as much of yeah, it as uh, as it's actually possible, really. So obviously, you've called yourself DMR Dave. Uh, for those of anybody that's been involved in airsoft for about two seconds will understand or i think i understand why you've kind of given yourself that sort of call sign what kind of part of uh running a dmr um or kind of where were the origins of the, of the name really what made you kind of choose that as it as a call sign or or, or a way forward to play uh so dmr dave actually come from my friends so i was building um my first airsoft rifle it was a gng &G gc16 um mm -hmm. and i put an overpowered spring in it along with other bits and pieces and it was quite a hot gun um before i even played like played with it out on the field and so we put a mosfet in it and locked it to semi and they called me dare my dave and we just sort of stuck so I, yeah we've gone from there and I, I absolutely love the dmr role just sitting back um you might have seen in some of my videos i actually sneak around the back of enemies and yeah mm -hmm. i absolutely love it i mean while we're on the uh, on the dmr it's, it is probably the most varied role in terms of kind of site rules and different things like that like some uh, people have got quite staunch dmr uh, rules in terms of they've got to be only one bb in the air at any one time some might have like a two second uh, pause between each one, different variants in terms of FPS, whether it has to be mechanical, uh, locked, or things like that. How do you find uh, playing the DMI role? Uh, how do you find setting yourself up for the different sites, or how much research do you have to do before visiting a new site to kind of pick up on those uh, differences and variances of, of rules? Yeah, so I always look on the site's website uh, if they have one. Uh, just to double mm -hmm. check what the sight limit is for a DMR. Um, lucky enough, my rifle's got a quick change spring system, so it takes literally two seconds uh, to change a spring out. Um, so sometimes I'm running an M110 spring in it with 1.6 joules. 
um, or I'm running 17 and 120. Um, and an M120, sorry. So, yeah, it's, it is a bit of a pain, but I can see why, because some people do uh, take the mick with DMRs with engagement distances and whatnot. So mm -hmm. I can see why the rules are there. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you mentioned um, quick change spring there. I'm going to come back to that in a minute because uh, I'm personally just going through a bit of a transition and actually... Uh, as I build up my quarter master sort of uh, armory of uh, rifles and uh, rips, as we want to technically call them, I am going into the DMR world. But obviously, uh, if anybody follows us, I'm 100% team HPA. So uh, I'll go through uh, the quick chain spring system with you a little bit later and kind of have that sort of debate uh, with you in terms of uh, people changing stuff out and things like that. Um, in terms of... Uh, from a, from a DMR point of view, you mentioned obviously you like flanking uh, and coming and, and, and picking people up from the side. What do you feel are the main uh, advantages of a DMR? What what part of that sort of excites you? Um, is it dictated by the back to the type of content that you make, or is it just one hundred percent you just enjoy playing that role and the dynamic that it gives you? I just love playing play the role, if I'm honest. Um, and then the content comes second. Um, so playing will always come first. So I absolutely enjoy it. So yeah, I'm out pretty much every other weekend going, and I can't get enough of it. To be fair, I mean, one of the, the key things that I picked up from uh, I me mean, for those of you that uh, are eagle-eyed, you'll probably notice that um, myself and Dave have got uh, the same patch on. Um, which is Fujin here, and obviously Dave's obviously sporting his on his on his rig there. We're both uh, sponsored by Fujin, uh, and one of the um, I actually started interacting with Dave before that sponsorship came a came along was you kind of renowned as one of the nice guys on the circuit if if those kind of things are uh, allowed in airsoft. If you're allowed to be a nice guy on the circuit, I'd like to think that I am, but. Uh, some people don't think that, but how do you find kind of um, the way that you put your content out um, and things like that? Are you have you got a particular type of? Are you just trying to put a volume of content out, or are you trying to tell a particular story, or trying to portray a particular uh, role other than obviously the natural DMR exercise uh, inside yeah. of things? So, um, I just, I just put content out that I think people would like, um, like good shots if i've had a cracking shot that that's going up straight away but yeah i, ju I just put the stuff out that i think people will like or think oh that, that's that, that was a good shot how did he do that all right sort of thing so um mm -hmm. yeah it's just whatever i capture on the day will pretty much go up um yeah. if i if i feel it's decent enough you've probably seen the videos of me falling over quite a lot i can't say so, there's one of me falling in a uh trench at no man's land uh with some uh comedy music to it so i can't say anything mate it's happened tough is the best of us it doesn't happen to yeah. campers but if you if you progress uh if you're out and about then uh and you're pushing chances are you're gonna fall over every now and again well yeah that's it i mean in terms of um i have seen the odd um video of yourself playing i think uh a video i watched recently at iron uh, at iron site where you play um as what i typically call as a runner gunner where you just run in a standard ar um so do you flip between that quite regular or is that just dependent on where you played in the game mode that's been put out in front of you um so i do try and get out of my ar just to you know sharpen up my skills with it iron sites a good site for that there's loads of lefts and rights in there uh, it's a really good site. But, yeah, I, I do switch it up. I do try and, if I'm out on a game day, take it out for at least one game um, just to give it a run out. So, yeah. In terms of, obviously, the the, type, the two different types of roles you've got there, um, what are the, the two main skill sets that you say, you said, obviously, you sharpen up your skills. Are you, are you talking um, just general gunmanship or uh, just general gameplay skills? What, what do you find are the two main differences or skill sets that you need to have for that um because i don't play so much cqb um like when i visit iron site I, I love just sharpening up my cqb skills um <laughs> switching shoulders with the ar going around corners and whatnot I, yeah it's, it's um it's quality i think and just to learn a new skill set as well whether it's self-taught or someone teaches you i think um it, it brings a better variety to your game. Well, yeah, I think I think that's the the main thing. You can't 
Um, I think I think as a as a DMR, you're playing both roles, aren't you? You've got to have those sort of thing. If you were just an out and out sniper, that would just be quite happy staying stagnant and then moving position every now and again. Uh, the DMR is kind of you're not quite sat back as far as sometimes you are going to have to get those skills handy. You're obviously are going to be very much important to, again in that team role, but also for your own sort of self survival, really. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. So you said that you've been playing airsoft eighteen months. What are you? What's the sort of landscape? So obviously we're just uh, moving into April now, the spring. We have all the fair weather. Airsofters are going to be out in force from this point moving forward, provided the rain stops. And um, what 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 we're we looking forward to this year from uh, DMR Day? What's what sort of new things we're going to see? What sort of what's on the horizon for you? Well, hopefully, once I get hold of a decent computer, there'll be more videos, longer videos. Uh, at the minute, I'm just uh, on my phone editing them, so it's quite hard to get like decent YouTube videos out. So the videos that are out, they're all done on my phone. So once I get a decent computer, there'll be much better content out there from me. Um, yeah. I'm going to try and get out to a few more sites as well this year. Mm-hmm. Um and travel a bit so we'll see where we end up <laughs> you, you say that we can travel a bit there have you got any any particular sites that have tickled your fancy that you've seen that you think oh, that might be worth a visit or war zones caught my eye i'd mm-hmm. love to go up to coventry um yeah. to visit that site yeah i'm always open to su- suggestions for new sites so if anyone could let me know that'd be great i think if, if you were to ask me i think as a dmr the ones that i've been to um one's close to you i definitely think you need to venture over the um the dot of the crossing and go over to um billericke and go to ap plantation um i think i think you'd actually really enjoy it there nice big open big ground. grounds but obviously quite fast dynamic games so you can play that that dmr role quite well uh yeah. you, you've got um six mil uh which is uh in the midlands again well over 60 acres on the side absolutely brilliantly designed for sniping dmr that sort of stuff uh i think no man's land which uh features quite heavily on the show because again it's one of the more progressive sites kicking mustang recommends it um the trench network is very good and great for somebody who wants to play the longer game um and then i'm trying to think where oh phoenix i think you generally enjoy phoenix as well I think uh, just for your type of gameplay, I think uh, if it was me, they'd be the ones that I would, uh, if you want to play this particular DMR role, that, that'd be the one I'd play. Warzone, probably, you'd probably be a bit more beneficial with an AR because it, even though it's outdoor, it is very much, it's all CQB. I'd imagine it's a bit like Ironsight from what I've what I've researched and, and, and been shown of Ironsight. It's outdoor, indoor, but kind of quite close quarters in engagement-wise. Yeah. yeah. I think that they're, they're my top tips. So if you're a DMR sniper, they're my top tips of, of, of places to go and visit. Um, you mentioned content on your phone there. I recently um, acquired a three-camera setup. Uh, I'm just getting to grips with the practicalities of running them during the game and battery management and stuff like that. But in terms of editing on your phone, um, we're not everybody's gifted in having a computer. I, I, I'll be honest, I run all the podcasts, you know, some of them are well over an hour long. I run all that uh, editing on my phone. What what software do you use for your videos? Um, so I use iMovie and CapCut. Right, okay. So I switch between the two. I do the main part on iMovie uh-huh. and then with hit markers and added sounds, I do that on CapCut. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, a little bit of a tip for you. Um, if you look for, uh, I I use I use CapCut, um, but for for medium to long form content, I use an app called Video Leaf, which is by an app uh, developer called Light Tricks. Um, right, okay. That might be worth looking at. You can do real long, good long format in there, uh, and you can re- reformat and repopulate stuff really quickly in that as well. All the drag and drops and all the different features and different things like that. Um, so I I do all that on there. Uh, and to be fair, you. Your phone's probably better than most of the computers out on the market anyway. But uh, have a look at that, mate. And if you're stuck, give me a shout and I'll, I'll talk you through some tips. And so I've been using it for work for, for years, but yeah, it's, it's pretty good for that. Uh, the long oh, form perfect. stuff. Jeez. But staying on content creation, you know, you're on about like getting good shots. One of the big things I've picked up on, I've, I've used cameras at two sites now. I haven't put any content out 
person. I did put a short clip out on uh, TikTok uh, of something that proper riled me up. But one of the key things I've spotted on there is um, when I'm playing, I'm a thousand percent sure I've just completely lit somebody up. And then by the time you've got the scope cam out and looked at it, let's say you put 10 shots through somebody, you probably only hit with one, maybe two. Um, and that, are you, do you find that sort of retrospectively that there's uh, some that you think are dead certs that miss? Or how, how do you tend to find, find that? Has that kind of opened up your eyes in terms of your perception of uh, hit taking and cheat calling, so to speak? Uh, yeah, definitely. When I'm out on the field, I don't cheat call. Um, <laughs> I just, I just think it's not good for the game. But yeah, if I've caught you cheating on camera, you're getting outed straight away. Um, you'll be plastered all, everywhere. But yeah, it it has because you know there could be a little twig just in front of them, and you're clipping the twig, and it's going off. Mm. Um, and, you know, you, you're not going to see that from the... But, yeah, it, it has opened my eyes. I think the key thing for me was just, um, once you get past sort of... I mean, I, I would consider I've got decent eyesight, but the um, moment you get past sort of um, 30, 35 metres out, you'd be amazed, at obviously, how fast people can actually get out of the way of BBs or if they're moving, you slightly miss them, barricades and all that sort of stuff. But just the, the, the play, a player's ability to, to be able to manoeuvre around, whether intentionally moving it or not, or but the time that it's taken to travel, I, it, it absolutely amazes me. And uh, I, I spent probably the last week's 10 days kind of having a bit of a, of a reflection period with this. An interesting point you mentioned there was um, that you were outing people when, uh, as soon as you got them out. I'll be honest, I, I did that one clip uh out onto TikTok, and I've got I've got one that uh, has really riled me. Where I've got somebody taking about ten shots to the face and still doesn't call it. But I'm I'm at two minds as to how to out somebody. Have you got any top tips on if you have nailed somebody on camera and you've got it out to out them? Are you, are you a um, judge, jury, and executioner, but purely on something um, that is really blatant, or do you give people the benefit of doubt if it's like flipped an arm or something like that? Um, I normally just. I do sometimes give them the benefit of the doubt, but if it's blatant, like I've just clipped you in the neck mm -hmm. and you've just hid behind the tree and then two seconds later you're still carrying on, uh, I'm going to hit you again and I'll out you for it. Uh, I've had a video, I've, I don't know if you've seen it, uh, I hit someone in the neck, like literally mm -hmm. under him. They hide behind the tree, two seconds later they've popped out, carried on playing, so they've... Uh, all I could see was their head, so that's what they got straight in the head. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but sometimes you just can't believe, you know, you've put two or three into them and, you know, they, they carry on. And it just... Yeah, I think, I, think that's, I think that's the main thing for me. Like, I, I'll get a benefit of doubt. I mean, obviously, I wear quite baggy clothes and, and stuff like that, and every now and again, I, I will say, you know, somebody flicks the thing. But one thing that, um, again, in the reverse of how much you don't see somebody and get hit or how many bbs don't hit you actually see the impact of the bb so like the, the clip i haven't released yet where i've clearly put about 10 in somebody they literally his blocks nearly fall off his face and he's literally got his eyes shut as he's taking taking the impact like you, there is no getting away from the fact that he has fouled not just one two three four five bbs but then that part of me is like, right, I really want to sort of out him. But there's another part of me is like, yeah, do I really want to be that guy? But I've got this, I've got this devil talking to me, I've got the angel here talking to me. But at some point, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of see how it gets on. But um, on that, but I think, but on that, then we'll, we'll come back to you mentioned at the start of the podcast that you um, obviously you find it's a hobby and it's the best thing that you've ever done. Before we go into the break, one quick question is in terms of, um, non hit taking and things like that. What do you think is the one thing that site owners, or I suppose it comes down to the players, what's the one thing that people could do better to sort of just either rid people of green cheats or be kind of police it better? What's the it's, next thing that we could do to change that? It's hard to police because obviously the, the sites have to pay for marshals and mm -hmm. that costs money. And uh, if they're pumping money into marshals, they're not pumping money into the site, making the site better. So it's a catch-22, I think, in regards to policing it better. I mean, you can always 
speak to a marshal if one's about and then just say, uh, you know, can you keep an eye on that? That guy over there, I don't think he's taking his hits properly. But, uh, yeah, in terms of policing it, unless they get, like, literally one a marshal per player, which is it's not economical uh, for the sense of the airsoft field, you're never going to stop it, I don't think. That's the worst part about airsoft, unfortunately. Sometimes you just got to play on and uh, not let it wind you up, I suppose. I think, for me... Um, I, I've said this a couple of times and a couple of people go against me and, again, it's think... I think and as, as you play more airsoft, that you get an appreciation that sometimes generally people don't feel the BB. Like if you're using an AR and you're 40 metres out and you're using a 0.2 or a 0.25 and somebody's got baggy clothes or a rig, something like that, or you, they're not going to feel it or the chance, especially if they're on the move and different things like that. I, I, I generally think there's a big difference between what we should say, the benefit of the doubt, people don't feel it, things like that. But then... If you're getting absolutely munched in the face, you know about it. So if you've been munched in the face and then I get sometimes if people are on the move and different things like that, you might take a second to either gather yourself, check what's going on, check if you've had a ricochet or something like that. Get anything. We all know within a half a second, a second, a second and a half of the situation in the game, whether you've been nailed or, or you haven't. Just for me that, Anything after that is then a predetermined decision that you've made that you're just going to be a cheat because you can't either be asked to go back to uh, the safe zone. You basically are willing to do whatever it takes outside, including outside of the game, to win to, to win that particular objective in that game. I just think, yeah, if you're a player, I think it ultimately comes down to play. I don't think the, the sites and the marshals can do anything else. I think it just comes down to you as an individual. Like, what are you doing? Like, you've been crunched yeah. and munched. Uh, and then just just take it and, and go back and come back and either shoot me in the face or get me or, or, or try again. Do you know what I mean? Learn from it. So, and um, that's that's my uh, general viewpoint on it. Um, we'll be right back after this short break for part two, um, uh, where we'll go through a bit of a Q and A and find out a little bit more on the technical side of things from DMR Dave on what his thoughts are on airsoft moving forward. So we'll be right back after this short. Welcome back to part two of episode seven of the Airsoft Podcast with the Head of the Chicken Squad. I am joined today by DMR Dave. In the first part, we talked all things kind of content creation, uh, cameras, why he's called DMR Dave, you don't need to guess, and where he's played and obviously where he'd like to play moving forward. In this section, we wanted to discuss um, some general Q&A um, and actually uh, dive back out into the community to see what questions you would like to have um answered i basically put out on my instagram a little bit earlier today some questions and i have some here some are quite personal to me so i'll answer them but since dave's our guest what we'll do is we we'll go through them uh, if there's anything that i think he can um i'll uh, pass it over to my um good guest so this is a good one so some of these are a bit close to the knuckle so i won't bother um saying who it's from but the first one Dave, I'll give this one to you, is in Airsoft, what's your um, most unpopular opinion? So what opinion have you got against Airsoft that goes against the grain? Um, team headshot, mate, I think. I think <laughs> so many people whinge about it. I, I think it's good for the game. I mean, if someone's absolutely beamed one to my head, they're getting well done, mate, which is... That's uh, that's a bloody good shot, but yeah, I I just don't understand why why people whinge about it as part of the game. I mean, if someone's good enough to hit you in the head, like you should be putting your thumbs up, not whinging about it. Yeah, I mean, my opinion on this is just it's just dead simple. I noticed you're wearing uh, is that an MB Tactical snooze you've got on? No, it's not MB. No. It's Amazon special, I think. An Amazon special. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. either way, you've 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 opted for face protection, so. You pay your money, you get an option to either wear full face pro, lower face protection, eye pro, helmets, whatever. It's like you can't run around and go, oh, that's a bit of a sensitive area. It, it, look, if you don't like being shot in the head, I'll tell you now, under no uncertain terms, airsoft isn't for you. Go and find another game. Stop ruining yeah, everybody else and expecting them to change. Go and find another game. There's this really good one called Tiddlywinks. I think you're probably more suited towards it. So. <laughs> 
um, <laughs> leave the sport and stop obviously having it as an opinion. So I actually think, if you think that's an unpopular opinion, Dave, I actually don't think it's as unpo- unpopular as it is. I remember that survey you did, and it was yeah. definitely more headshots than it is. And again, I think the platform that social media gives uh, it gives people who are in the minority a louder voice than they necessarily would be. And I think we feel it a little bit more because it is against what is the majority vote. So I don't yeah. think that's as unpopular as you uh, probably give um, probably give uh, it credit for. Um, speaking of um, unpopular opinions, that's still quite a popular thing. So you said at the start, I mean, I, I first, so, so the next question, um, and this has actually come in from uh, one of the members of the Headless Chicken Squad, um, best thing about airsoft i think i know what your answer is going to be but uh, i'll let you go with that one there's a lot of good things about airsoft um i think i think from a mental health point of view it's mm-hmm. it's excellent you're out and about fresh air you're walking you're exercising uh, you're getting stuck in you've got your you've got your eyes set on an objective and you're working together with a team for mental health it's really good um yeah. And that's, I think that's why I love it because it's mm-hmm. good for my mental health. Um, yeah. Getting out and about the fresh air, and not having to worry about anything apart from playing airsoft. Yeah, I, I'll agree. I, I'm, I'm well documented, and I think it's the ultimate escapism. Uh, I will point out that um, if you play for the Headless Chicken Squad, um, Paul, AK Plex, who's the CEO, he wouldn't appreciate it if you were walking. He's 100% you are running to that objective. So you, you, <laughs> you're welcome to your running, uh, so you're walking. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, I'm not qualified to talk about mental health, but I can talk about my own, and you're welcome to talk about yours. But I, I, I generally think it's the the ultimate escapism. Uh, we all have pressures of day to day life. Um, Airsoft gives me ability to release that whether I'm shooting somebody or I get to physically exert myself, I get to challenge myself mentally, uh, going to different sites, learning the maps, uh, learning how to actually uh, challenge that objective. And that I, I fully agree with you. So, uh, yeah, I'm, on that, um, I got asked a week to go to actually do something featured around mental health. I am working on it, but um, I am actually going to get a mental health professional uh, on the show to actually talk about it because... Uh, it's such a serious topic. Without me being qualified to do so, I don't want to be um, talking about it. So, uh, okay, that's fair I don't want to get, I don't want to cancel. I don't want to get cancelled for uh, talking about somebody's mental health when I don't know about it. Uh, oh, oh, this is a good one. Um, for those of you that watch, uh, if your wife is listening in the background, uh, press mute. What is your next airsoft purchase? I've been looking at SR twenty fives. So right. My name's DMR Dave, <laughs> but mm-hmm. as you can see, I'm actually running a 416 repl- replica at the minute. Um, mm-hmm. So I want something that's a bit more of a DMR calibre. So I'm looking at mm-hmm. SR25s. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm yet to choose one, so yeah. Um- yeah. I'm just in the pro- I'm just in the process on uh, changing my uh, Wolverine into a DMR because the Inferno... Uh, premium FCU has the ability to make a little click of a button just to change it onto a two second pause DMR. Uh, okay. I'll tie it out, be whispering death when it's finished. Um, but uh, but then I'm obviously at the ability then just to. I, I'm going to run two tanks. Um, this obviously comes back to you, your quick change spring. I'll be running two pank- tanks, both locked off, one running at uh, AR level and one running yeah. at uh, maximum DMR level. Um, and then like, for example, there's a few sites we play at where probably half the games suit running a DMR, uh, and then the other half are down to AEG, uh, sorry, AEG, uh, an AR. So yeah. I'll be running that kind of thing, but uh, that's not my next purchase. That's kind of more yours. Um, my next airsoft purchase is, because I know that my partner listens to this, is I won't be making an airsoft purchase because I'm sponsored. <laughs> they get sent for free. Um and if you believe that you're a mug, right? Uh, so, um, can I come on as an airsoft guest? Looking at who sent it, yes. Um, drop me a, a actual proper DM, and we'll get your boots. Uh, probably moving into season two now, which uh, it's probably about ten weeks away. But yeah, we'll work on that. Uh, another one for me. Where are you based? Uh, we're based in. The Midlands, so the Headless Chicken Squad are based all over um, North Staffordshire, the Midlands, Coventry, Rugeley, that way. 
and um, we've got a large base in uh, North Wales and uh, moving into like Chester, Manchester, Warrington. So that's where we're based. Where are you based again? Dave, you say Surrey? Surrey, yeah. So I'm on the border of London and Surrey. So quite near Heathrow Airport. Are you inside or outside the M25? Uh, outside, I think. Just. Yeah, that's, that, that's, why, that's why you're willing to travel then. Those people inside the M25 need to broaden their horizons. I think they just think they're inside <laughs> of a horse field. Ooh, considering we're both sponsored by a loadout specialist, this will test you. Rig or plate carrier? I prefer a plate carrier. Uh-huh. Um, it's just more comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, and I suffer with back problems and the plates in the carrier actually help with my back so i'd say plate carrier all day yeah i i, I fully agree for the same reasons uh, i also run uh like a osteo uh, uh orthopedic kind of back uh kind of wrap thing just to kind of keep your back uh warm during you know, like when you sweat you've been sweating and stuff like that and you cool down a bit uh i yeah. kind of for that but again the plate carrier just gives that little bit of structure especially when you're carrying that weight um, and when I'm carrying the rest of the rest of the team on me, so I'll get a shot for that as well. Oh, interesting one! I've got my own viewpoints on this, and um, I've got a few private jokes. But um, best BBs on the market. What 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 do you use? Um, I don't think you're sponsored by anybody, so I think you're going to be giving me an, an unbiased opinion. So Eva ASG Precision Four Point Rose. Mm-hmm. Um, I use them quite a lot. And I tried out some Rebel Point Fours the other day, and I'm impressed with them. They're they're mm-hmm. a good BB. Yeah, very mm-hmm. impressed. Okay, cool. Um, quick one. I get these at a ridiculously um, cheap price. Having said that, I did use them before that. I run exclusively uh, Infinities, unless I'm playing indoors, and then I'll use um, some Vulcan green tracer ones whether i'm running um three twos or point four o's i use them i use infinities and i so people slate them i actually think they're really decent i have heard on them i have heard on the grapevine that there's a few uh other brands that are actually infinity not what they say they are but we'll we'll, we'll kind of move on that i don't want to name we'll be naming any names before i get myself into any trouble but yeah i think in, in terms of bbs again you've got to have decent quality uh, I hate running non-bio, so I'm not washing adverse. I hate running bio BBs. Uh, I think they are terrible for, for your gun. So I do, wherever possible, try and avoid um, going to bio BB sites as much as possible uh, because they are just not very good for your gun. Are you guys still recruiting? Uh, yeah, we're all we're up to... Th- we had a, uh, had a meeting, say meeting, it's not a board meeting. We had a phone call this morning, we're up to 32. Uh, the chicken squad, yes, we are still recruiting. If you want to get involved, come on board. Best advice when starting out with HPA, uh, throw all your AGs in the bin and put all your money into it. That would be my best advice for that. But in all seriousness, just literally get a decent air system with a line and then just get started into it. It'll change your life. Ooh, this one's for you, this one, Dave. Uh, one thing you could change about airsoft. I think I know what this answer will be. but People taking their hits. Right, mm-hmm. literally, that's that's one thing I would change. Um, you can, you can just, say the word, Dave. Just cheat and yeah, just just cheat. Yeah. Do one. Yeah. We just need to stop. Yeah, and if you haven't played airsoft before and you're on the field and you're getting lit up and you're not and you're wondering why you're getting lit up and you've not put your hand up saying that you hit, that's probably why. Um, I know they they talk about hit taking in safety briefs, but the amount of times I've seen. Uh, new players getting absolutely lit up, and I'm just like, put your hand up. You'll put the stop then. Yeah, I think I think with new players, you've got to take them under your wing a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. Otherwise, they, they'll end up not enjoying the sport. So yeah, if you see a rental or someone struggling, just help them. I think that's the um, the main thing. We all need to lead by example. And I think I actually have enough faith in the airsoft community that if we actually push forward with this as much as possible. Um, and I, and I guess actually going back to what you were saying about exposing uh, people online and the hit, non-hit calling is, um, would actually just rule. We do go to a site where they'll actually openly say, uh, when they're talking about hit, hit taking, they will say there's probably 25 people running cameras. If you don't take your hit, the chances are you're going to be beamed all over YouTube and made to look like an absolute, we'll say noob, we won't say the actual word that they say. But um, yeah. I definitely think, I think that's obviously... 
it's a deterrent. You know, if everybody's running goat cams or GoPros, then I, I, I generally think it would stop because, let's be honest, nobody wants to be uh, beamed all over Instagram, TikTok, YouTube uh, as a well, yeah. as an on. Yeah, it's it's just not a good thing. Um, next, uh, what? Well, hang on, I'll answer that question. Now. What what would I change about airsoft? I would change people that turn up at game days, stand in a game brief, agree to take part in the game. And then just go and sit in the spawn and do nothing and ruin it for everybody. Uh, yeah, if you're into powerful. airsoft and you're a hobbyist and you just want to do it that way, go and sit uh, by the range and by Eagle that way. Get yourself all worked up over um, jewels and FPS and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, I, I just think if you're turning up to play the game, play the game, stop ruining it for everybody else, and then claim left that's not a farm, it's not a game. Like if you, for me, if you if you paid your thirty five quid, your twenty five quid, or however much you're paying, and you listen to a game brief, and you have been told that you are on the red, blue, green, pink, orange, wherever it is this week, and your job is to go and capture that flag, search and destroy the bomb, do whatever, just do it. Like you know, just just do it. Don't ruin it for everybody else because the siren just put twenty aside together. And you and your group of 10 groupies are just ruining it for everybody. Because uh, then, yeah, that, that's the one thing I would change. I think if you're a hobbyist, that's great. Love having your part of sport. Just don't take part in the games and ruin it for everybody by not actually taking part. Um, best sites uh, we've been to. I'll let you have that one, Dave. Best sites, probably Iron Sight. I think okay. it's an absolutely Why? quality site. And it's, every time I've been there, it's been sold out with tickets. Like, it's so mm. popular. Um, and the people that go to the site, uh, yeah, they're, they're a good bunch of people. Um, and I've enjoyed every time, every game that I've, uh, every game day that I've been. So, yeah, I'd highly recommend that. For those of you that don't know, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm right saying it's fairly, it looks, from the pictures I've seen, it looks like it's like an old kind of plant nursery, like a farm. Nursery yeah, style, sort of like yeah, it 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 looks like yeah. So you've got quite a few, um, well they call them tunnels, but they're they're sort of like old nursery sort of like tents. Tents probably not the right word for it, but um, like a, like a, like, a, like they're like a botanical um, canopy, aren't they? Kind of um, yeah, like like, like a, a big plastic green app sort of thing. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, um, and they connect onto a building. Um, but yeah, it's it's good for indoor and outdoor play, mm -hmm. and they play really good games there as well. Like clear the site. Um, I think last time I was there, we broke the site record for clearing the site. I think we've done it in like twenty one minutes, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, we absolutely smash it to pieces. But yeah, it's it's a really good fun site to play. You've got a decent, from what I see on social media, it's quite a decent community down there as well. I know uh, Gemma, one of the founding members of UCAL, uh, is there quite a bit. Uh, Dan Airsoft, yeah. is he? He's kind of pretty much quite uh, prominent yeah, down there as well, isn't he? Yeah, down there. Um, yeah, really good photographer as well. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you get some good photos down there. For the, always good for the gram or TikTok, as it is uh, now, isn't it? So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. good. Okay, cool. I mean, I always say uh, best that I've been to. Um, I think it, it kind of changes as I as I kind of go on, but because uh, we go to so many different ones, there's obviously different sites and different things. But I think if I was to play, if I was looking for a site that was um, like urban CQB uh, exclusively, because I know that I'm going to be in for an exil exhilarating day. Uh, and your success on the day can be kind of not micromanaged, but it can be broken down and quite measured. Uh, I would say outpost. Uh, we went there last week, and um, you get a few run-ins with a few idiots uh, that are rentals and noobs and and things like that. But I think on on the whole, it's, it's just that fast-pacedness of the day, and they're always kind of trying to do better with the side to evolve it. Every time you go, it's slightly different and similar sort of things. It's that. The fast paceness each game is no more than sort of twenty minutes long, so you kind of like and you swap, you switch sides if that makes sense. So yeah. you capture the flag, change sides, <laughs> secure the objective, that sort of stuff. I, I, I kind of love it for that. Uh, that fast pace, you come out, you come out of there, and you know you've had a good day. Whereas some some of the bigger sites, you can the day can drift a bit if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, you see one objective, and the next objective is like literally at half a mile like that way. It can be sometimes a bit of <laughs> it. 
a bit of a nightmare, especially when you're not getting any younger like myself. So um, that brings us to the end of the Q&A section and also the end of section two. We'll be right back after these short messages with the third and final part of the pod. Uh, where we get to find out a little bit more from the technical side of um, Dave and also what he's got planned uh, in the future for Airsoft. So we'll be right back after the short message. Welcome back to part three of episode seven of the Airsoft podcast with the Headless Chicken Squad. I've been joined today by DMR Dave and we are going to, in this section, go through a little bit more of a a technical point of view. Uh, And Obviously, with Dave being a DMR specialist, uh, there's other factors that have to be considered uh, in setting up uh, of the riff and different games and tactics. We look at the technical side of that, and then for those of you that tuned in last week, we introduced a new feature, which is a quick fire round, quite controversial. Um, they've still been talking about it in the uh, the Chicken Squad group. Some defensive answers, uh, and then obviously we'll um, find out um, obviously what Dave's uh, got planned uh, moving forward as well. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about sort of Fujin as well. So we spoke before. Um, where you were talking about you run a quick change spring system, uh, and a uh, and obviously in your I'm assuming it's AEG, you're not running gas, yes. gas playback, no. are you? No, it's an AEG, yeah. So, okay, um, so so one of the um common discussions, let's call them discussion stroke debate that we have AEG, HPA, uh, gas blowback, and CO2 are the main power sources that run through airsoft. The most common mm-hmm. one is AEG because that's the uh, the most common entry platform, arguably the easiest to kind of uh, get started with. Uh, we predominantly are, are HPA. I think um, most most of the lads in our team run HPA systems now. Uh, and then what the debate is, people always argue that people that run HPA are cheats. It's all a myth and a legend. And, you know, you put BBs through a HPA system and they all get angry and all of a sudden a lot heavier and stuff like that. Uh, but one of, one of the counter arguments to that is obviously the quick change spring system. People would say with HPA, you can dial the, the, the tanks up and down. Uh, but then the common response we have is obviously you can change a spring within, so I think you said in inside two minutes. In terms of uh, changing that, I mean, I, I've always been like, airsoft the same as anything. If there's a workaround or something, or uh, a loophole to be found, or if somebody's going to just cheat the system, whether that be taxation, marriage, whether that be uh, lying to your missus that you go into the pub or not, or going to the gym. If you're if you're the sort of person that is going to um, basically say during chrono that you run one thing and then run off and change your spring change your, your, your tank or tell them you're running a 0.2 BB but actually you're running a 0.36 or vice versa um, I, I personally think that comes back to the conversation we had about people just need to stop cheating and trying to gain an advantage, I mean if you're cheating yeah, you must be clearly trying to make up for other areas of you're trying to compensate for certain areas so I, I just oh, yeah, think <laughs> I, I just think that's kind of different thing. I mean you run AEG as, as is an AEG just something that you, you're sticking with? You said you're trying to do a new DMR build. Is that, are you yeah, going to get our AEG or why do you stick um, with that over the, the other two power sources? Yeah, so I have looked at HPA, but I do quite enjoy teching on AEGs. Mm-hmm. Um, I quite I quite enjoy building, well, like building the platform. So, yeah, I, I will go HPA sooner or later. Um, mm-hmm. It's just, yeah, just have a play around first with the old AEGs, build up good knowledge and whatnot. Yeah. So all, all my tech and stuff is all self-taught um, mm-hmm. with a little bit of help from my friends here and there. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'll definitely look at HPA. I think I think that the, the main thing about AEG is it, obviously you've got the gears and the different things in there to, that it's just added extra. I think it's a great a great place to start, and you know the the entry level to HPA can be, uh, you know, it can put some people off. But then also some people like having the line and different things like that. But I think I think the the, the main thing that um, you know I I, I joked and said I'd, I'd throw all my ages, but I, I still uh, I still have a collection, so we say. 
I only told you how many I got there, but I have got a collection of AGs that I still run and I lend to players on game days or same as anything if Riff goes down on the game day, I've got that option to play or you can have all the other things, an O-ring can go on your tank and that sort yeah. of stuff. So I still have them. And they're, they're, I have got an affiliation with them. You know, I've run um, ones that um, you couldn't really do with HK. They've obviously got um, sound enhancers. They've got different sounds, different feel, that sort of stuff. Um, I just think it's one of those things that you, you should go with what, what works and what suits for you. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. some people quite oh, like, yeah, obviously, uh, the batteries. And, uh, you know, if, I think if you're decent at teching and you're quite, you like the problem solving element of, I mean, my my experience of ages they go down more than uh, than HPA. But if you if you you enjoy tacking and you love putting that right, then that's fair enough. But if you your average Joe on the street that literally doesn't know what uh, the difference between a flat head and a Phillips screwdriver is, then it's not, probably not the the right thing for you. Um, what what part of what you said you enjoy tacking? What's the best part of the tacking bit that you that you you find in, interesting? Is it just the ability to interchange the parts or do you just do you like the intricacy of the you know, the gears and the motors and stuff like that what what part yeah, of so that really picks your attention it's more so like i i when i was at college i studied engineering anyway so i've always had like a knack for um building bits and bobs so yeah. it, and i'll pick things up quite easily so when it comes to you know teching i i enjoy like the gears building a good Air, air compression setup as well that's <laughs> like really important especially in a dmr build yeah um and then just getting it spot on it's like n- there's nothing sweeter than building your riff up to you know a target fps or jewel that you're that you're aiming for so um and, and getting it spot on and consistent is you know is the goal so- then something the other day where somebody saying that the race the race for fps different yeah. things but um I think if, if that limitation is there, you want to make your toy, your rip, you want to make it as efficient and uh, effective as possible within the limits of the of the game. Um, and I genuinely think that anybody who's saying, oh, you shouldn't be doing that, is I, I don't bother if a site says to me that you're going to be running at 250, right? Um, I also think that you're going to ruin the game. It then does become airsoft. It then becomes gel blasters or nerf or... Um, what's that new thing they play with the kids at paintball, like low impact paintball? It's like oh, scrap master. Yeah, yeah. That that ain't that ain't what we're here. For. We're here to within right. those limitations. The the law states that it can't be above this and can't be uh, above that because it then becomes a firearm. Just let us play within those limitations. If you're then uh, that person that says it hurts too much, or um, you think people shouldn't be getting um, it hurt. Uh, so it's not for you. I personally, if somebody claps me and it hits me in a fleshy part, it hurts for about 10 seconds and they go in with a bit of a strawberry. I just think it's quite funny. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. And, that's part, and that's part of the thing. That, it's that pain that makes me run from point A to point B that little bit quicker. Or, you know, that's the thing that stops me popping my head out because I know somebody's lighting me up. Or that's just part and parcel of the game and why, why we play. And that's that's the good thing about it from that point. Um, what's... Um, what would you like to see from a from a DM, DMR point of view? What is what's your perfect DMR game day in terms of rules set up? Um, so from that we're talking. So I, I suppose the one we want to look at is um, child limits, minimum engagements. We're then talking uh, how you the, the mechanical lock of it because there's two different interpretations. I'm, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think there's the strict DMR one, which is two second rule. Uh, if that's even a thing, because uh, you do see the ones that are just spamming triggers on DMR, uh, just locked on single, single fire. What, what's your perfect or your interpretation of a perfect rule setup for the DMR? So, one point eight joules um, mm-hmm. as a limit. I, I normally run about one, and if the site's lower, if I, I have to change the spring and put a lower spring in, um, mm-hmm. which isn't you know isn't too bad, but. Um, Minimum engagement, I think, at Driver Wood, which is a fairly fair site, they play with 1.88 joules there, and their minimum engagement is 25 metres. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm happy to play 25 metres, as long as, like, 
my sidearm can reach that. It's mm-hmm. not really that much of a problem. Yeah. So, what's what's your um, opinion on the uh, on the uh, rate of fire? Then are, are you? Uh, I see certain sites that say you're allowed, only allowed to have one BB in the air at any one time, or some might say there's got to be a two second pause between each shot. And you've got some that are just like, I'm really not that bothered. I think a lot of sites have sort of put that ruling in because people are there literally spamming spamming the triggers um, and lighting people up with a high FPS build. Um, and, you know, the rules are there for a reason, um, <laughs> especially with minimum engagement. You, you know, you can end up really hurting someone with that sort of power at close range. So, um, yeah, yeah I, I can see why ruling's there. and. To be fair, if you're spamming a DMR build, you're only going to end up breaking your gun at the end of the day. It's like it's not going to last long, especially if you've just whacked a higher power spring in a stock setup. It's just going to break. Um, yeah. So yeah, I can see why. My favourite would probably be I have seen sites that allow two BBs in the air at once. So if you've taken your first shot and you've noticed that it's, you know, it's not where you wanted it to go, you can quickly just readjust and go yeah um that that's probably the ideal ruling if if there was an ideal rule on um dmi instead of you know having people just absolutely light people up for you know um from a dis well from a certain distance and yeah. literally you you know you're not far off full auto when you're spamming the trigger are you so yeah, yeah. i mean there's there's two sites up here that we go to um that have got minimum engagement at 15 meters which is tasty let me tell, let me tell you yeah I'll... i mean what, what's your thought what's your thoughts on that i mean i, I mean I'll, I'll be honest with you, I, I, I actually don't think it hurts that much i mean and, and, and as an experienced player you know something's hot and you know um you kind of know it know that and also i don't actually think a rental or a newbie player would be would have the knowledge to run a run a dmr if that makes sense uh, yeah, from that no, point of view, it does. It's more of a, a an experienced player sort of platform. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think the problem. I think the problem is with minimum engagement distance of fifteen meters is basically that um, if you then obviously get too close to that, then um, you can't really do anything In else about section, it, mate. Well, let's go through some quick fire questions, and they're, they're basically just opinions on um, two different kind of sides of the fence, just to kind of um, see where you are. We answered a couple of them in the uh the q a that we did with the other ones but it's kind of i suppose, I suppose the ones them. that are just a bit tongue-in-cheek you know a bit of fun that we uh people do and don't like to have uh other things uh and also try and test where your allegiances uh lay uh and stuff like that so um i'll do we'll only do five um and we'll we'll, we'll kind of go from there so first one of this week's quick fire uh, I have learned from last week's mistakes. So, um, and obviously, uh, I don't know Dave as well as I know uh, some of the lads at the chicken squad. So, I won't make them quite as uh, personable, should I say. So, um, I'll make the first one nice and easy. Uh, I think we're both uh, in the same camp on this one. But, uh, Camo, um, are, are you a multi cam or a Marpat man? Definitely Marpat. Marpat, team Marpat. Everybody that doesn't uh, understand your, your camo, Everybody uses multicam. Everybody uses CP. It's not original. It's not big, and it's not clever. Get yourself some decent camo. I've got a Marpat uh, boonie on uh, in the British summertime. Trust me, um, best uh, camo on the market um, on there as well. You'll also find it closest to it if you can't find Marpat. Get yourself searched on the internet for A O R two, which is the um, digital woodland pattern. Um, Next uh, quick one uh, on this: kicking Mustang or Camman? Mustang. Okay, good team. Team headshot. Having said that, Camman uh, loves a good headshot himself. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, ooh, where am I going with this next one? Nod Rich or Tokyo Murray? Uh, TM. Yeah, to- Tokyo Murray. I personally can't stand either of them. I just don't. I just don't get the yeah. Tokyo Murray hype. I just don't get it. I literally. I've got no exposure to it. I've got no, I just don't get the hype. Um, especially the uh, NGRS system. Um, if you go onto the Discord, they just they just pilfered with the NG, uh, RX, NGRS, the new generation recall system. 
yeah, uh, it's, it, just, yeah. it's just littered with broken ones. It's like, yeah, yeah. I, just, I, just, I just don't get it. And also, is it really that real? If you've ever fired a proper AR and then tried to use the recoil system, no. they're not, there's no realism in them. I just, no. just, just don't get it. Okay, uh, where am I going with this one? Driver wood or iron sight? Oof. Um, you've already answered this question. Yeah, iron sight. I was just thinking more gameplay, like, yeah, iron sight. Yeah, iron sight. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Ooh. Where are we going with this one? I've got one, I've got one more, and I've just literally changed my mind. I was going to answer that question, but I thought it was a bit mean, uh, to be honest. Especially since we we now got uh, a bit of a, we both got an allegiance with the Fujin at the minute. Rebel or ASG? I'm going to say Rebel. I, I yeah. really liked what I saw from them. Yeah. On that, so, that, that was really the end of the quick fire. But what what is it about a Rebel BB that's different to to, to sort of ASG? I uh, think it's more the consistency. Of how well, um, how well they actually travel through the air. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, I know, like, no, you're never going to get a BB that's spot on perfect every single time. Mm-hmm. Um, but the consistency of Rebel compared to ASG is, yes, yeah, it's, it's impressive. I'm going to hold you account on that. I'm going to say, fill a mag of Rebels, fill a mag with ASG. Get yep. yourself on a range, and then uh, let's do. Let's actually do it. I think I've looked, and I can't actually find a, an actual kind of litmus test for BBs. And I haven't done some research into it. There's only really four main suppliers of BBs worldwide. Um, I know there's different branded ones and things, like that, but most of them are buying them from the same place. I don't. Yeah. I don't really get the difference. So, and I, yeah, until somebody can prove or put a litmus test to it i'm kind of i'm a bit we'll kind of see where we go with that but um yeah. i trust i trust you i trust you to put a decent uh a decent pair of tests uh out there for that um and also dmrs are probably a good one to test it as well because uh you haven't got the painstaking of having to wait for the bolt action to be put through and, and different things like that and it's a, it's a decent mid-range one really um yeah and also, you shouldn't have any, you shouldn't really have any feeding issues because you haven't got obviously the piston kind of being spammed out and trying to go faster than um, than than the mag can feed. So that should be a, a decent test for that. Um, yeah. We spoke we spoke obviously um, about Fujin. Um, you're am I right saying you're the last of the intake or the latest intake for Fujin as a as a sponsored um, player? Am, yeah, I'm the latest. Um, I'm not too sure how many, uh, I know there's a competition going on at the moment where mm-hmm. there's a sponsorship up for grabs, uh, within the prize. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm one of the judges for that. So, um, all I'm going to say is I've looked at some of the stuff. There's two clear runners at the moment for the, um, uh, at, at the minute as it stands, there's two entries that are, uh, far and away better than the other two. And obviously uh, the, the other many other entries uh, yeah but i'm looking forward to seeing the, the results of that looks pretty cool yeah yeah it does um so how how did you come across um that in terms of um fujin i mean is the rig that you've got on there is that a fujin uh, has that been sourced uh, and and so sourced this, out isn't by a fujin, this isn't a fujin rig um mm-hmm. the only thing that i've got hang on let me just show you these um delta pouches they're really good you can have yeah. Um, sort of, it holds many different caliber magazines. They sort of like pull out the on bungee cord. Um, yeah, good quality as well. So, yeah, I've bought those. I bought a um, Saxon holder. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a hundred liter. Well, you go with the big boy then. I run it. I run a hundred liter one. Um, but I always find they're really, really good. Um, yeah, just just get this stuff around. Um, and they're actually extremely good value for money. Um, for what they are. Oh yeah, hundred percent, definitely. You can fit everything in them. They're, they're yeah, they're just next level. And I am looking at a plate carrier. Um, I spoke to Stuart the other day. We're mm-hmm. currently building a plate carrier together, so I should be putting that order in this weekend at some point. So yeah, cool. Yeah, I think I, I think the the main thing we could, I don't want to go into it too much because we we kind of did that when we we had Ghost on the other week. But I, I mean, there's a few good guys in the industry, but I'm struggling to come across uh from a from a retailer and a supplier point of view somebody 
as good as Stuart. Uh, he's always always looking for ideas. He's, he's very clear about which area of the market he wants to operate in uh, as yeah. a retailer, uh, where his specialism lies, and also how supportive he is. So, did you watch the episode when um, Paul, who's the CEO of the head of Chicken Squad, was on and he was talking about comp- competitions and airsoft and stuff like that? So, yeah. I know you're aware of this, so I won't. Uh, I won't come across as you're playing dumb on this, but um, for those of you that um, do watch and, or, or you don't watch, we're not actually involved in it, but we're we're kind of taking part. So Red Null Airsoft have put together a 6v6 tournament that they're going to host on the 2nd of June because we said there wasn't really enough outdoor competitive, competitiveness within Airsoft to try and prove that it can be done. Uh, and Fujin got wind of this and are actually uh, sponsoring it and uh, have actually alongside uh, buy to put prices up for the competition. Just airsoft are involved as well, uh, for full disclosure. But just Stuart's willingness to sort of help and, and get involved. It wasn't just all stick my name on it. He's actively out there with his sort of uh, sponsored athletes, if you want to call it, uh, and teams yeah. kind of actively kind of taking part in that. He'll be there on the day, kind of getting his suppliers involved and, and different things like that. And I think the airsoft industry needs a little bit more. Um, of that, 100%. I mean, I mean, what's your experience of, of dealings with them at the moment? I know yours might be a yeah, bit slightly it's shorter it's than mine at the moment. Nice. He's one of the nicest blokes you'll ever speak to in the uh, airsoft world, mm-hmm. um, and he's supported me since since he first popped up and started following me, which was I don't know, it's probably about a year ago now. And mm-hmm. you know, he's always always uh, had an interest in um, my content and. You know, I've I've always had an interest in in the loadouts that he um, puts together. Mm-hmm. I think think what he's doing and the market, the space in the market that he's made for himself. I think yeah, he's really good airsoft company, um, mm-hmm. and it's only going to get better. So. Yeah, I think it's actually quite a clever move because um, again, we we've got quite a few new lads that have, have started um, playing for uh, checking squad. And when you first start and you're trying to work out the type of play that you want to be the type of equipment you want to use, the role that you want to play within your team. It isn't just as easy as getting on Amazon, AliExpress or whatever and just buying a rig because the pouches aren't right for what you need. There isn't enough. They're kind of in the wrong place. It's not comfortable yeah. for what you type, the amount of stuff you're trying to carry, things like that. And if you, if you don't know, I mean, every time I acquire something new or I look to kind of go on, it's really difficult trying to find what is the best part or best place to get it from. So to actually have somebody who can literally have basically your own bespoke rig built for you and then packaged yeah. together and also having somebody who's got the knowledge to know which rig to go with or uh, there's loads of different brands and loads of different things. And we we, had, we already answered the question on the podcast, rig or plate carrier. If yeah. you've got trouble yeah. and different things like that, I didn't even dream of going for a, a plate carrier until... Stuart mentioned it. I was just going to go right, sort me out with the rig. This is what I think I need. Blah blah blah. blah. Uh, told him about back problems. I now obviously have the the belt uh, that's supported by the braces. Obviously, the plate carrels and support the back. So it's tailor made to kind of suit for that, really. Uh, and again, I wouldn't have had that if he hadn't taken that time. It's easy just to follow a link on it on a website. But as soon as I put the inquiry, and in, he's then on the phone. Uh, so right, what do we actually need? What what are you trying to get from it? What's that sort of stuff? That won't work. That will. And then we kind of just move forward from there, really. So yeah. uh, it's a very clever way to look at it. And also, every single person entering the airsoft world needs to look at that, whether you want to run a shooter's belt, whether you want to run a rig, plate carrier, things like that. He, he, he'll he be the, the the guy to to tell you to be able to source it, really. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's always good from that point of view. Um, before we uh, sort of wrap up and finish, what... Um, you got any questions for me? Any shout outs you want to do? Any any pot any people in the airsoft world that deserve a shout out that I maybe need to be made aware of or, or don't currently know of? I just I just want to shout out to my mate Charlie. Um he was the one that got me into airsoft. Mm-hmm. Um so I just shout out to him. Um and he plays alongside the Filthy Casual squad. They're a good. Is that, bunch is that a team of that you're part with? Is that a team that you're part of, uh, or do you just rock uh, up with them? Or yeah, I link up with them every now and again um, mm-hmm. when they go out on game days. Um, but yeah, I'm more. You see on the Fujin website, I'm more of a rogue operator. So you're a rogue <laughs> um, operator. Yeah. 
Yeah, so <laughs> um, I do I do link up with them every now and again. Uh, good bunch of lads. So yeah. On that point, you said obviously you're a bit of a rogue operator and stuff like that. Have you? Do you choose to be a rogue operator because that's just how you choose to be, or have you just struggled to find a team to run with that complements, or would you utilize a DMR uh, player? Uh, effectively is that so yeah it's sort of a bit of both um so i i play regularly with uh, a couple of my mates mm-hmm. uh so it's just me so there's three of us so we're not quite big enough to be a team as such but um yeah if we get that going then yeah I'll definitely have a team put together um but yeah you you find Did you all play, uh, the, you all play the same role or are you kind uh, of no no we all play different roles so mm-hmm. uh yeah i'm more like the marksman and then you've got james he he just runs around like a headless chicken pretty much <laughs> excuse the past that's that's exactly why we're called what we are like yeah every, yeah that's 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 the main it's a bit like ron seal really we do exactly what it says on the tin yeah uh, and, and people don't know what to do against it yeah jeff jeff uh he's sort of like he'll run he switches between dmr and ar all the time so mm-hmm. uh he's got a varied sort of uh gameplay but yeah you know we do well on on game days um mm-hmm. uh, yeah it's just uh if we can get a few more people together uh, it'll be the next step well i know uh you spoke to me about um potentially wanting to come to that competition day you boys want to come we we will have plenty of players floating around that can pull it all together and we think of splitting up some of the other chicken squad teams in there to sort of complement and and stuff like that uh, and i think like I probably say that it isn't it isn't the easiest thing to do to pull a group of players together to operate as a team like it is really difficult and uh, it needs more structure than people kind of uh, give it credit for really but um i generally think that a a proper DMR or sniper, uh, complementing a, a set of um, runner gunners, as they say, would be the, the would be the perfect setup for that. Uh, I think it's yeah. really it's really really good from that from that point of view. Um, I mean, from what I've seen and the way that you conduct yourself and the way Stuart's about to, I mean, I know obviously you're a bit far away from us, but uh, having said that, we have got um, we've got a guy based in Essex uh, that's part of the Chicken Squad. So if you always want to come. On members of that and, and take part. You will, well, well, we do we travel, travel a bit. We we have said we want to get down south and come down and see. Yeah. And if you're ever coming to the Midlands, mate, you're all you're all the welcome to pick up and run with us uh, any day of the week. Uh, it'd be a pleasure to, to have you on the squad. Um, any other any other shout outs you want to do? Uh, I think that's it. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I think that pretty much uh, wraps up the podcast um, for for this episode. Um, thank you for uh, coming on, mate. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, um, thanks for having me. And getting your um, sort of perspective on, on the airsoft um, community. And also, like, just getting your different viewpoints as well. Obviously, it's a different... It is a, it is a specialist skill set, DMR, and um, there aren't many specialists, should I say, or I haven't come across some... Uh, many uh i know a few snipers uh some good ones uh but yeah the dmr is uh they tend to come across especially so you get a few different uh people that, that flirt with every now and again uh yeah so obviously it's good to do that and obviously um there's ever a vested interest uh with food as well it's always nice to to kind of join that uh together as well so thank you for, for coming on um for those of you um, watching on YouTube or any of the platforms, thank you very much for tuning in to episode seven. I don't quite know how we got to episode seven in the podcast. We'll be back next week with more exciting guests, topics, and discussion, and always a few spicy viewpoints in there as well. Uh, if I could kindly ask that you um, like, comment, share, hit that notification button, uh, and please subscribe to the podcast. Uh, there's more and more content coming all the time. Uh, new features that we're doing will be product reviews, some with sponsored uh, people, some with um, non-sponsored products, whatever we feel is new and relevant on the market, both good or bad. Uh, I've had this conversation with Stuart today. Uh, if there's a review of something out there and we generally don't think it's uh, what it's uh, made out to be, we will quite happily tell you that. Um, so, yeah, 
stay tuned, stay uh, subscribed, get yourself subscribed. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. Your support and your comments and your interaction each week is very, very, very much appreciated. Um, and I would like to thank you very much for tuning in. So thank you very much. Good night. God bless. I'll see you next week. Thank you.